This is a quick video to explain in layman's terms what you're looking at uh, when you're using a portable five gas tailpipe analyzer on a gasoline engine. So here's my normal starting point. Note that all of my readings are zeros except for oxygen. And this makes sense, right? I don't have any hydrocarbons or carbon monoxide coming out the tailpipe, no CO2. But if I'm breathing ambient air, I'm gonna have 21% oxygen or something very close to that. So uh, here's where we're starting off. Everybody is zero except oxygen at 21%. So to make this simple, remember that any gasoline engine is burning oxygen and it's burning gasoline in order to make CO2. And that would be the perfect reaction, right? I burn all of my gasoline and I burn all of my oxygen and the only thing I've got coming out my tailpipe would be CO2. Now everybody knows that combustion is not a perfect process and that's why we're looking at tailpipe emissions in the first place. So let's take a look at a couple of readings. So normal, uh, rich mixtures, lean mixtures, that sort of thing. And, uh, and we'll look what happens with the numbers and explain what's happening in the combustion chamber at the same time. Before we take a look at any live readings, I wanna take a quick peek at this chart. And it shows all five gases that the tailpipe analyzer looks at. But I only wanna look at a couple for right now. So. Look at the red line, carbon monoxide. Notice, uh, you know, so if I'm at 14.7 to 1 in the center of my chart, as I move left, I get richer and richer. And notice my carbon monoxide line heads in a very straight line right uphill. And the richer my mixture is, the more carbon monoxide I'm going to have. And look, this makes sense. Uh, as I'm richer, right, I'm going to have excess of gasoline. And if I've got excess of gasoline, it means I'm going to have some unburned fuel out the tailpipe. So high CO is a good indicator of my mixture being rich. Notice that I get to the right of 14.71. My CO line's pretty flat, right? Because I'm, I'm burning, I've already burned the vast majority of my carbon monoxide. Now, conversely, oxygen, notice that, uh, so my yellow line on the bottom of the chart, right? Uh, it, if I'm rich, I'm going to burn every tiny bit of gas or uh, oxygen rather in the combustion chamber. So uh, if I'm rich, O2 remains very low and it doesn't start to move until I start to lean out. So once I hit 14.71 and move leaner, oxygen heads very linearly uphill. So if I look at that little V uh, that's formed by carbon monoxide and O2, uh, I can use that in order to know where my mixture is, right? When both carbon monoxide and both CO2 bottom out, then I'm at 14.71. So that's a good mixture. So what do I want? Very low CO, very low oxygen. And notice that CO2, the green line, that peaks at 14.71. So that means I'm burning all my fuel, I'm burning all my oxygen, and I'm making CO2. So that's just what we talked about. So what do we want? If we have the perfect mixture of gasoline and air in the combustion chamber, I have no fuel left over, no oxygen left over, and extra, I'm sorry, not extra, but lots of CO2. So here is our first engine that we're going to look at. Uh, the air fuel ratio on this one is normal. We're very close to 14.71. And notice the things we've talked about so far. So notice carbon monoxide, half a percent. This is great. So very low carbon monoxide. Oxygen, also very low, three quarters of a percent or so. Uh, and CO2, nice and high, almost 14%. And so I like my air fuel ratio on this. Notice the lambda reading on the right shows 1.008. So very, very close to 14.71. Uh, notice though that hydrocarbons is high. Now this is a, a lot of extra unburned fuel out the tailpipe. A uh, couple reasons for this. Number one, this is a standby generator. Uh, it has, it's a four cylinder liquid cooled one, but it has uh, low compression. I think it's like six to one. And so it certainly does not have perfect combustion. I have some unburned fuel out the tailpipe. So if we were measuring a car for emission purposes, 193 parts per million out the tailpipe, this is too high. Uh, even if you didn't have a catalytic converter, this is too much. But my air fuel ratio is correct. Low CO, low O2, and high CO2. Now this genset has got an adjustable main jet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the 
main jet open a little bit and notice that carbon monoxide, again, my good indicator of a rich mixture, starts to take off. Oxygen did drop a little bit, but not a ton, right? It went from three quarters of a percent to about a quarter of a percent. But notice my CO2 now all the way up at 2%, 2.1%. And so, uh, so again, carbon monoxide, good indicator of rich. As soon as I feed this thing a little bit of extra fuel, my CO takes off. And so, again, that's the relationship I look at, CO2 and O2. Uh, and uh, if I fatten it up, CO2 rises. So now we're normalizing again, bring it back to where it should be. Uh, and you see my numbers again uh, returning to where they started. So as we continue to lean this motor out, look what happens. Of course, uh, carbon monoxide, we know as, uh, as, as we get leaner than 14.71, goes low and stays low. And so we're between one and two tenths of a percent. Oxygen, however, has taken off. That's no longer low. We're on the rise. So here we are, two, two and a half percent. Uh, notice my CO2 has dropped a little bit, right? Because I've lost a little bit of efficiency. I've not, I'm not at 14.71 anymore. And my, uh, and my, CO2 production suffers as a result. But if you're looking for rich and lean mixtures, these are the numbers you're looking at down here on the bottom. Want carbon monoxide to be as low as possible, O2 to be as low as possible, and, I, and then I'd have to correct air fuel ratio. Last thing I'm going to show you before we end this video is going to be a cold start on a 2008 Chevy Silverado. So, uh, uh, notice all my numbers are zero. Hydrocarbons are a little bit high at 11 parts per million. This is actually because the gas bench is warming up. I got a little bit of hydrocarbon drift, uh, and I need to zero the bench. Uh, but, uh, but either way, it's not going to harm us. 12 parts per million is not going to kill us, right? So we start the vehicle, and, uh, and our reading is just starting to come in. And remember, this is a cold start, so we're going to be a little bit on the rich side. So I'm looking for high carbon monoxide off the bat. And so notice O2. 0.36%, CO around one and a half, well, climbing, uh, you might make it to 2% here. Oh, there we go. So again, a little bit of a rich mixture as we start our vehicle. And this won't last very long. We don't have to, we're, the, the modern engine's not going to stay uh, fat for very long. And then we'll see it quickly start to lean out. And then in pretty short order, I'll see my catalytic converter light. And I'll know that happens because I'm going to end up with virtually no carbon monoxide out the tailpipe and no oxygen out of the tailpipe. And look at our CO2 number here on top, 14.5%. So this is higher than anything we've seen, right? So uh, we have an extremely efficient engine to begin with as compared to the generator we were fooling with and, uh, uh, and a catalytic converter on top of it. And so here's where we're really shaking out. So within a minute, maybe, of starting this engine, I have virtually no carbon monoxide coming out the tailpipe, tenth of a percent of oxygen, almost 15% CO2, and very low hydrocarbons out the tailpipe. So, uh, so in a perfect world, this is exactly what, what things are going to look like.